Let us pray. Loving God, open our ears to hear your word and draw us closer to you, that the whole world may be one with you as you are one with us in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, welcome to worship this morning. Thank you for your ongoing support of Hay Street United Methodist Church. You can mail your offerings to our church address that you see on the screen or you can donate online on our church website, haystreetchurch.org. God bless you, and thank you for joining us. Open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year in the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Hi, friends. It's David Woodhouse, pastor at Hay Street United Methodist Church. And I'm thankful that you've joined us for our virtual worship service for Sunday, January the 23rd, in the year of our Lord, 2022. My plan is to preach this week and next week on proclamation and response. We have a passage from Luke chapter 4 that begins this week and then continues next week. 
It's that story of Jesus filled with the Holy Spirit, going throughout the region of the Galilee, uh, preaching and teaching in the different villages of the Galilee. And in the passage that my grandson Harvey read for us today, from Luke chapter 4, verses 14 through 21, we hear the story of Jesus, again, filled with the Holy Spirit, following what was his normal custom, Luke says, of going to the synagogue, and in this case, to the synagogue in his hometown of Nazareth, on the Sabbath, the, the, the seventh day of the week, when the Jewish community would gather in the synagogue to hear the scriptures read, uh, to discuss the scriptures, to meditate on them, to give thanks to God, uh, to spend their day in drawing near to God and worshiping God. I don't know about you, but I love to read the Holy Scriptures. And we're told that Luke says that Jesus, following his custom, goes to the synagogue and that he stands up to read the Scriptures. And the attendant gives him the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Jesus then turns in that scroll to a very particular passage and reads these words. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And then Luke tells us Jesus rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and then sat down and told the gathered group, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. So I want to talk a little bit about what Jesus proclaimed on that day. What was the good news that he lifted up? As I said before, I love to read the Holy Scriptures. And one of the spiritual practices that I have developed over the years is that I wake up each morning and begin my day with Bible reading and with prayer and a time spent drawing near to God and thinking about what all it is that God is calling me to do that day and how hopefully with God's help through the Holy Spirit, I can move through my day in a way that honors God, uh, that makes use of the grace that's been given to me through Jesus Christ and offers God's grace and love to others around me. Uh, when I was a child... I often witness my mother reading out of this Bible. Uh, this is a Bible that was given by my grandfather to my grandmother, my mother's mom, uh, my Molly as I called her, uh, Violet Turner Taylor. Uh, it was given to her by my grandfather uh, in 1956. And somewhere along the way, uh, Molly gave this Bible of hers to my mother. And I remember as a child growing up, uh, watching my mother read not only from this Bible, but from other Bibles that she had. And oftentimes she would read it aloud to us, her children, uh, and we would talk about it. Uh, but I, I treasure this Bible because of its association with my mother and my grandmother. Uh, this is a picture I took of my grandmother when I was a senior at UNC Chapel Hill taking a photography course. And uh, I sat on her back porch, which was a screened-in porch, uh, at what she called her little Coca-Cola table and asked her for permission to take her picture. And this was the result. Uh, I love it because it reminds me of what a kind and gentle uh, sweet-natured person she was, and how she taught me so much about what it is to be uh, someone who loves God and loves our neighbor. And uh, often 
uh, heard my grandparents read scripture and talk about scripture, uh, meditate on scripture, often heard them pray, and a large part of my faith formation occurred because of my relationship to my grandparents and my parents. I wonder who uh, gave you a love for reading scripture, for drawing close to God through his word. Uh, who, who taught you how to walk with Christ? Uh, I hope there are people in your life that you can point to who had that kind of impact on you that my parents and grandparents had on me. I have another Bible here uh, called the Young Reader's Bible. This Bible was actually given to my older brother in 1968 by First United Methodist Church in Lexington, North Carolina. Uh, I was four years old at the time. I was born in 1964. Um, and somewhere along the way, my older brother passed this Bible down to me. And when I was a kid, I very clearly remember reading from this particular Bible. I had a King James Bible that I read from as well on a daily basis. Uh, but I found this Bible much easier to read and to understand as a child, uh, partly because the print was a whole lot bigger uh, than in the little Bible I had. And uh, it had some pictures in it and some uh, notes and things and some maps and illustrations that helped me understand. And it was just written in, in more modern English. So I'm thankful to still have that Bible with me today. Uh, but I'd say all that just to say that I can relate to Jesus's custom of going to be with the faith community on the Sabbath. And Luke tells us that that was his custom. So that means it happened many, many, many times over the 30 years of Jesus' life that led up to this moment of that particular Sabbath day in the synagogue at Nazareth. Next week, we'll look at how the group who was gathered there with him responded to what Jesus proclaimed. But I just want us to hone in for a few minutes on what Jesus said about his fulfillment of the scripture taken from the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Uh, the first thing Jesus proclaims through that passage and through his saying, today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing, is that Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit. He was anointed by the Spirit uh, to proclaim good news. Uh, he came to share a message of hope, uh, a message of reconciliation to God and one another, a message of recovery of the image of God for humanity. Uh, he came to proclaim that he was God in human flesh, and as God, he is capable and is working to make all things new. And so it was good news. It was the gospel, the euangelion. Uh, that Jesus came to proclaim, and he was able to proclaim that because he was filled with the very presence of God's self, the Holy Spirit. And then on the heels of saying that, he says that that good news is for the poor. Maybe they're materially poor, but maybe they're spiritually poor. In truth, all of humanity is poor without God, right? And without God sharing with us the gift of his son, Jesus Christ. We impoverished ourselves through our sinfulness and our waywardness and through the sinfulness and waywardness of others around us. And we even impoverished God's creation. But Jesus came to proclaim good news to those who were spiritually poor, physically poor, financially poor. Uh, however you might envision poverty, uh, we as humanity were impoverished and Jesus came to restore to us the riches which are the rightful part of our inheritance as children of God, co-heirs with Christ. So he comes to proclaim good news to the poor. And then he says he came to proclaim release to the captives. Now, that could be people who were literally captives, enslaved peoples. But it's also people who are captive to sin and death, who are enslaved 
to sin and death. And Jesus has come to proclaim release to the captives. Uh, and so we give thanks that filled with the Spirit, Jesus was able to break the shackles that were on our arms and our legs as a result of human sinfulness. And Jesus was able to even break the, the shackle of death that, that loomed over all of us because he offered himself on the cross of Calvary. Sin has been forgiven and death has been defeated. And then Jesus says he's come to proclaim uh, recovery of sight to the blind. Recovery of sight to the blind. Surely there were people who were physically blind and, and he healed uh, some of those people, but not all of them. Uh, he, he came and he healed and performed miracles for some who were sick, but not everyone who was sick. Uh, but he also came that we might have a restored vision of who God is, who we are, and what God is doing to bring all the world back into one accord, into unity, and into uh, oneness with God's self. Uh, and so uh, Jesus uh, taught in parables, in ways that help people's vision be restored so that they could see what God wanted to do in and through their lives and how God wanted to work through their lives to bless the lives of others around them. And also, Jesus said that he came to let the oppressed go free. To let the oppressed go free. Don't you know the people who lived there in uh, Israel, in the Holy Land at the time, felt oppressed by the Romans? Uh, who in their military might uh, were in that region uh, as occupying forces, uh, but also people felt oppressed by broken relationships, broken relationship with God, broken relationships with one another. Uh, they felt oppressed by poverty and by the violence that was around them all the time, uh, by disease, uh, there were so many ways in which people felt oppressed. And Jesus said, I've come that the oppressed might know that they are now free. And of course, the greatest thing about uh, truth that Christ offers to us is that when we know the truth, the truth sets us free. And so when we hear the truth of Jesus Christ proclaimed by him and continually proclaimed by his Holy Spirit uh, through those who love and serve him. Uh, that truth sets us free and, and relieves us from oppression. And, and then finally he says to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. The year of the Lord's favor. Uh, Jesus wanted people to know that God was on their side. That God who is good who loves them, did not want any of them to perish, but that he sent his son in order that the world might be saved through him. He didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved. And so it's the year of the Lord's favor. Good, good, good God loves us and he wants to be with us. And he wants us to experience his goodness. And he wants us to embody his goodness as his spirit lives in us. My prayer for us this morning is that we would hear the good news proclaimed by Jesus and believe it. That we would hear the good news proclaimed by Jesus and believe it. That when he says, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. We can trust his word. That as the living, breathing King of kings and Lord of lords, he has the power, even now, to perform all these things that he said he came to fulfill. If there's any oppression in your life, 
if there's any uh, bondage in your life, if there's any lack of uh, truth and holiness in your life, Jesus has the power to bring what is needed to set you free, to fill you with love, to administer grace in such a way that your life is transformed and changed. And so let this be another day where we turn our hearts to the Lord and where we ask for his help and where we receive his love and his forgiveness and where we then offer that to others. Thanks be to God for his word to us this day. May God bless you and bless your family and may God bless our community as God works through Hay Street Church to share the love of Christ from the heart of this city. Amen. Please join me in saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.